Is it wrong to have pets? I worry that caging a bird or keeping a cat or a dog in the house is going to result in some really restrictive karma for me in the future. So I think it depends. There's definitely beautiful, beautiful stories from our scriptures of the relationship between humans and animals, that beautiful connection, that beautiful relationship. And so when we think about, you know, having a cat or a dog, for example, well, we've got this beautiful story going back to the time of the Mahabharat, right? Of Yudhishthira and the dog. And he's so connected to this beautiful dog that even when, right, the gates the gates of heaven essentially are open to him and he's told, climb on this chariot, you will go to the heavenly realms. And he's about to get in and he brings his dog to get in the chariot. And they tell him, no, no, no dogs are allowed. He says, forget it. Now you think we're talking about going to heaven. Like for eternity, the heavenly realms, that which everyone dreams of. And this, this embodiment, I mean, Yudhishthira is the, the embodiment of wisdom, of incredible wisdom, of incredible dharma says, forget it, I, I'm not having any of your heaven if my dog can't come. I mean, it's a beautiful story. And it's a beautiful teaching when we realize that the scriptures are teachings. To me, there's obviously a lot of teachings in that story about kindness to animals, about loyalty to any one of any species who has stood by you the whole time in your times of difficulty and now it's your moment of glory and who are you ready to just leave behind because it's time for your glory. And he teaches us even if that being is a dog, still you should never leave them behind. So many people are so ready in their lives. The moment they get an opportunity of it's such a beautiful message that when any being has stood by you, never leave them behind. You know, for so many of us, we get a moment, an opportunity, our day in the spotlight, our moment to shine. And we're so ready to just leave behind anyone who's been with us all along. You see it when people get successful. You see it when they get wealthy. You see it when they become buddy odd me. Right? How many of the, the people who have really been by their side throughout, now they don't have time for them. Now they feel too big, too important to associate with little people. And it's such a beautiful teaching. Even when that being is a dog, still you don't leave him behind. Even when the opportunity you've been given is to enter heaven, still you don't leave him behind. So I think from that, the teaching that humans and animals can have very deep and beautiful connections is really clear. So I don't actually think there's anything wrong with having a pet in theory. You know, giving an animal a beautiful life where they're safe, they're well-fed, they're loved. It's 
a gift to the animal as well. You know, it's like adopting a child. The one who had nowhere else to go, now you've brought them into your home. Most, most pets these days don't come because people are wandering through the forest setting traps for wild animals and bringing them into their home. I don't think that's right. But given that we have a situation in which there are so many animals being abandoned, so many animals in the pound, in shelters, like children in orphanages, except, or in many cases, if the children aren't adopted in a short period of time, they kill them. So to, to adopt an animal out of the pound, out of a shelter, or one who comes to you, you know, really, my parents had a cat for years who suddenly showed up at their back door one day, out of the blue, crying, crying, crying. Well, where they used to live was full of coyotes. It was in the hills, and there were lots and lots of coyotes that killed cats. And this cat was pregnant. And somehow, she must have intuited, like, this is not a safe place for me to be. She showed up at the back door, and... You know, mom let her in and that was it. So I think there's actually a beautiful gift to the animal and to the humans of having those relationships. It also makes us realize how deeply connected we can be to species other than humans. And that's very, very deep spiritually to realize how connected we can be to those of all species. So no, I don't think you're gonna get any kind of restrictive karma for having a dog or a cat, as long as you take care. You know, I mean, don't, don't bring a dog into the house if every member of the family is out all day from five in the morning until nine o'clock at night, and nobody's got any time to be with the animal and they're just left alone all day long every day. I don't think that's a very nice life for the animal. But otherwise, if you're bringing them in to be a member of the family, it's beautiful. That being said, I do think there are some animals that maybe aren't necessarily meant for apartments, flats, enclosed homes. And you know, I've never thought about it like this, but as the questioner asked, maybe birds are one of those animals. Maybe an animal that you have to actually keep in a tiny little, essentially a box, that it's not meant to live in. I don't know, I've never been much of a bird person, so I don't, I don't have a definite answer about that. But I think a bird, if you let it go, it's going to fly freely. Cats and dogs come right back home. Right? You've got a doggy door, you've got a kitty door, they go in, they come out. They're going to come right back. They know this is my home. But my instinct is that if you open the cage of a bird, that it would probably fly away. And I think that if that's the case, if an animal of its own accord would leave this place, that that might be the right way to decide whether I should be keeping the animal or not. That if when I let it out to go to the bathroom, it comes back, well, it's mine. It's a member of our family. But if I let it out and it flew off, I think we could probably assume that it never was meant to be kept inside to begin with. But I think in general, the idea of having animal friends is really beautiful. And especially these days, you know, I was talking in Arthi about Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the things that's afflicting so many people these days is loneliness. 
people are really lonely. If you can have an animal to whom you give love and from whom you receive love, they've done all kinds of wonderful studies of patients in hospitals, elderly people in old age homes, and the impact of having animals around. You know, puppies, kittens, it actually has a huge impact on them, a very, very healing impact. So I think that that relationship is a very a good one. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring a chimpanzee into your house as much as I really wanted one when I was young. Couldn't understand. Every year all I wanted for my birthday was either a chimp or an orangutan. Parents would never give it. But in retrospect, I think I think animals that really are wild animals should be in the wild. But it's been so long since dogs and cats have been domesticated animals that I think the majority of the cats and dogs in people's houses these days, if you let them out into the wild, most of them probably wouldn't know how to survive. And it's not just that individual animal, it's, it's a species that's been bred. So it's not like, well, if you took it at birth, then it would be able to survive. It's, I think we've altered the genetic makeup of these animals in such a way that I don't actually think so many of them would do so well in the, in the wild. So, you know, let wolves be in the wild. Don't bring them into your house. Let the chimpanzees, let the orangutans, let them be in the wild. Or at least in these beautiful, you know, national parks that are created to protect and preserve them, but not in your apartment. But for cats and dogs who have been bred to really need us, I think it can be a very meaningful and beautiful relationship. And I think wherever you give love, the karmic fruit is sweet. Whether you're giving it to an animal or a human or a tree, I can't imagine a karmic situation that would penalize you for that.